we're, we're again getting a nice recording now, or we will. Well, now, what I did was to make a list of things that I was troubled about. <laughs> <laughs> a list of things that I was was troubled about, and I uh, I wanted to ask you about. Let's begin with one thing that I do feel we should not lose. That's the Q and the X. How do you feel about that? I feel strongly that they have no business in a no new letter notation because uh, this leads directly to one broad point. A no new letter notation has certain important advantages which if you read Roadblock, you yes. see them spelled out there. But the s saving in space from any no new letter notation is relatively negligible. Your estimates uh, aren't too far off in the general the straight spelling reform of West, version of West will save between 2 and 3 percent of letters, and the uh, initial learning medium form of West will add from 2 to 3 percent. But either of those savings is relatively negligible compared to the fact that a one sign, one sound notation can save one letter in six nearly 17%, 16 yes. and 6 tenths percent yeah. of the saving. And uh, the, uh, it, you can't have it both ways. In other words, you can't have the virtues of a no new letter notation and the uh, substantial savings that can come with the addition of new letters. And to try to carry water on both shoulders is, is to spill both buckets. Well, now, now I recognize what you're saying, all right, but I think there's another point. I think that in, of course, I assume from what I've read in, in a roadblock and perhaps in uh, the uh, letter frequency uh, book, which I've also uh, gone through carefully, uh, that uh, I, I, I find in there only, I don't find you as enthusiastic about having Wes look like English as I wish I did. Well, I can answer that very Definitely, and it's a crucial question because uh, it's a question, in fact, in which I think uh, Sir James Pittman with ITA, which has rendered an invaluable service, uh, rather went overboard. The, uh, what I say here in Roadblock in the suggested criteria for phonemic notation is that once the basic 40 sound for the uh, symbol structure has been determined. All further gains in compatibility, and that's what we're talking about, yes. the, uh, must come from concessions from strictly phonemic symbolization with a corresponding departure from complete simplicity. Right. And the equation between simplicity and compatibility is the, uh, is the crucial test of any uh, notation. Now, I uh, learned in the course of the eight years or more, that, including a doctorate thesis, that I spent uh, on uh, the problem of shorthand for general use. I learned what it was quite obvious that others had uh, done, done before me, and that is that when you meet a specific problem, there is a very great contempt temptation to rationalize a solution to it that moves in the direction that you want. And therefore, in trying to work on these basic questions, I felt that it was essential to work out the suggested criteria 
without regard to the specific problems that they might lead to, get those pretty firmly fixed, and then turn to those criteria when I was tempted to uh, let go. Now, the difficulty in your, your hoping for a greater degree of compatibility is, on the one hand, well, I guess I'll have to go back to the most basic question of, uh, uh, of all, <laughs> but not in too much detail. What is your thought uh, for a new spell? That is, for what purpose are you trying to shape it, and how do you propose to bring it into uh, use? Well, now, now that I realize because is because that cuts across all that, such questions. That as this. that cuts across. That that is really the basic question. Now, yeah. I believe that I have the feeling that you and uh, the the phonemic council uh, probably feel, and no doubt rightly that there is no use trying any longer to change adults' reading habits. I came to that conclusion in 1946, where I had, had already been in the problem up to my years for about 35 years. Right. And, had a, and since that time, my thinking, regardless of the type of notation or steps that it led to, has been based on that fact, and I think we've got uh, 400 years of experience plus a quarter million of Carnegie's money at a time when uh, it would buy what would take a million and a quarter now, Yes, uh, that you are not going to significantly change the habits of the adult generation. Well, now, I would just like to put in one other point there. This is This is a great change that has come in the printing industry that is just now coming into the printing industry. That is something that I want to ask you questions about because you know infinitely more about it than I do. You're down to date on it. And when I'm, I'm talking about this, I'm saying that these real changes that have come in the, uh, the methods of the composition, are only a year old. They're brand new. They aren't really, they, they are in operation. But just uh, yes, yesterday, I was talking to one of, of the computer programmers, typesetting programmers, asking him again whether he foresaw any problem any a problem that that, uh, that couldn't be surmounted uh, in having the input into the computer, a typesetter computer, go in as a traditional orthography and come out in the revised orthography. And he could see none except that it would take a large, uh, a, a large capacity computer. I don't know how many K, but it would have have to be programmed with all the words in the dictionary. That's that's what it would have to be. But this is not an overwhelming job at all for a a, a computer. And then what happens is that the Reader, you see, with modern typesetting, and to me this is just as amazing to me as it is is to you, uh, except that I have have been involved with uh, photographic typesetting since 1933, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Harold Horman and I developed the earliest photographic typesetting. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, we had we. Uh, we developed the uh, Rutherford photo lettering machine, which was the grand, the grand daddy of all of the photographic typesetters. Mm -hmm. Harold isn't around anymore. He 
he had died uh, uh, 15 years ago, I think it was, yes, 15 years ago. But, um, but we, we never took it to computerization. And our, our equipment was uh, what is now regarded as very excellent, but, but primitive, primitive. But the concept is the same. The concept is that rather than having lead type, you have a film negative with all the letters on it, from A through Z. I read that insert that you pasted in to the revision of Newspell. Oh, yes. With a good deal of care. Well. But, and, and one question came to my mind immediately that would color my thinking a good deal. Where does the, uh, where does the master, which that refers to, come from? For instance, suppose you want uh, uh, 11 point Bodone on 12 or something of the sort. Yeah. Uh, to what does the computer turn? A, uh, a printed or drawn facsimile of the type? If usually, that usually that. But sometimes, a, um, uh, you, yes, usually a, a, a negative of the, the complete alphabet arranged in a certain way. Yeah. All that, right, one question. How is that negative created? Uh, how are Does it go back to cold type and creating the negative? Uh, it, it can, well, it can, but it need not, no. I mean, uh, if, if you are going to match Bodoni, let's say you are going to match accurately linotype Bodoni, yeah. then you, you get mat, you, you get drawing from yeah. the linotype company and, and uh, re, re, re photograph those onto a, a negative, either in a round positioning or a horizontal positioning, depending upon the machine that it's, that it's to be used. Or you convert it into little squares for other machines, for the digital composing machine. But we can uh, now, now where the new creative alphabets come from, if that is the kind of question you're asking, is, is from a few sources, two of which are, are Photo Lettering Incorporated, which I represent, and I have brought along a catalog to show you. I thought you might be interested. And the other ones, the new International Type Place Corporation, in, of, of uh, which I am the chairman. And we are, are supplying new alphabets to all manufacturers of the new photographic typesetting machines or the old, the old metal machines. Yeah. Well, now, let me show you what's behind my thinking so you can it's good to my condition. Yes. I sent you, I'm sure, the second time I sent you material, a sample of uh, the right. alphabet and its yeah. pedigree. Yes. Now, the point involved in considering anything of that sort for general use is illustrated by the fact that when the early forms of that were being developed, the monotype people charged about $8 for cutting a punch and uh, driving a die. Twenty. Twenty-five years ago, when we needed a few more characters, now they, they charged charge forty odd dollars. Right. Now I suspect it might be double that. It oh, easily, yeah. easily. Well, yes. now, is yes. there any way of escaping that process in this photo? No situation? trouble at all. Yeah. We do it all the time. That is, that is you, we you, do it all the time. You, you yes. draw it to larger scale and photograph it down. Here. Right. Well, that. That this is completely practical, yes. All these can yeah. be, be, be put on. Now, the only problem, uh, the only problem here is to get the keyboard that, that will accept this many characters. The 40 character keyboard or, or the 41 or 42 character keyboard.
well, it we, could be done using caps uh, for some of them. I, I mean the cap case for some and the lower case. But well, this can be done. This is no uh, trouble at all. Well, we, we, uh, we keyboarded monotype composition for some material in a similar alphabet to this. There are 225 uh, character case right. well, by dropping out the caps, which... Uh, that would which, be which gave you the uh, few of the wider point uh, settings which you needed. Right. There. The only the only um, possible annoyance there is that uh, on uh, on new keyboards, the keyboards that are used on all the machines are not the monotype keyboards anymore. They're the regular typewriter keyboard. And you would have have shifting, constant shifting, of course. Except that you that you could put your your lesser used uh, characters on uh, a cap uh, case. Well, wait a minute. There's, there is a better solution than that. That right. uh, was worked out a good many years ago, uh, following the general principles of the Dvorak simplified keyboard, which you undoubtedly yeah. uh, know about, which. Uh, somehow hasn't made its way yet, although there's such enormous uh, advantages for it. But on the typewriter, it is possible to build without significant alterations a 92 key uh, typewriter, uh, that is 92 character, 40, uh, 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 40, 46. 40, 40, no, 48, the for, well, yes, for, yes, 46 uh, character without altering the present touch fingering. In other words, you give one more row to your left little finger, leaving your touch fingering exactly as it is now. Now, if you drop the caps and put the figures on the shift, you can write an entire uh, phonemic uh, alphabet plus the three or four characters that you most need, the comma, period, the hyphen, and cap sign, uh, on uh, the lower case. Yes, I can see that. There is one one catch to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, only one. <laughs> well, uh, there's only one that I immediately uh, uh, see. <clears throat> Most machines. Not quite all of them, however. Most machines, um, the 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 numerals using the numeral the numeral case yeah. is the problem, because most machines are wired, pre-wired, not the typewriter part of it, but but the other part of it, the the printout yeah. it is called, yeah. that is in the equivalent of the caster with monotype. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, printout is wired to give the same width for all numerals except the one, the letter one, yeah. uh, the uh, numeral one. All other numerals come the same width and, the re and, and usually the one is the same width. That is so that you can get columns yeah. of numbers sure. correctly. Sure. Now, uh, uh, there are some machines, though, that that could be varied on. Well, I'm I, sure I that it can be done all right. I, I see There's the no. problem of that. But let's come back because you set me dreaming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this your, this is your, uh, this is nothing at all. We can do that. I mean, yeah, that can yeah, be done very very well, easily. That's that's no problem at all. Well, it's within possibility uh, that there might be some merit in using that sort of an alphabet for instruction. But I think not because uh, let me come back to the basic question that I started with of asking you the purpose you had in mind in devising All this right. and how you hope to, to bring it into a measure of use. All I would like to do <clears throat> is uh, <clears throat> probably 
and this is an awful thing to say, probably go through the disappointments that you have gone through. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I, uh, I <clears throat> like the idea of going through them with the printing industry because uh, the printing industry uh, <clears throat> can do so many things now which, which could not be, be done uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would just like to be sure that we were not giving up on, uh, on the uh, changeover, like, like England's changing to the decimal system, that we are not, not giving up on the uh, changeover uh, uh, too soon because I think it might be possible that the printing industry could do this so simply that the appeal that, that having eliminated the need for learning for a large number of of people learning to write it, learning to write it, and limiting ourselves to the uh, simplified method uh, w with, with printed material and public signs and anything that is, is a public, books and things like that, and letting all of the rest of us keep on writing the old way for the rest of our lives, teaching the uh, younger generation the new way, letting those bright boys that want, want uh, to do research learn our uh, present traditional orthography, letting them, them learn that if they want to, but on, only teaching the new way. And, uh, and uh, hoping that, uh, that this might be done. Well, I, think I know this is an awfully, uh, awfully uh, uh, glorious idea, and I'm sure it won't, won't, won't be successful, but at least to, I, I would like to um, um, create enthusiasm in the uh, graphic arts, uh, the printing, industry if that's possible for it. Well, the support of the graphic arts would be of enormous importance, but after all, uh, practically everything that is printed is printed to be sold. That's and right. The, uh, the and, and therefore, if we can make the compromises that are necessary above and beyond 40 or 41 uh, sounds, or I'm, I'm inclined to think 42, but I'm not squeamish about this at all. If we, we can make a few regularized compromises that, that enable anybody to, almost anybody, to uh, read the material uh, without going through a lot of education. Now, a, a, a very interesting thing has happened to me. <clears throat> uh, photo lettering is an organization of about a hundred young people. Well, young and old. Uh, it's a hundred people. Some of them are about my age, sure. Those of us who began this back, back in the 30s are, of course, my age. Uh, <clears throat> many of the younger people who come into our organization do not uh, know any, know very little, next to nothing, about the language or anything else. We get them as, as a darkroom operators, camera operators. Mm -hmm. Some of them come from abroad, Italian boys. We have quite a few of them. We have boys from uh, 
from Korea and from other places. Sensitive fellas, but, uh, but they, they have lots of, of uh, trouble with the language. Now, in what I have, have done so far in working out what little I have for new spell, when these boys see this work going through the dark room, they are instantly attracted to it. And none of them, none of them, have had the slightest trouble reading it. They just read it automatically. Even, even the old printed piece that I had, which, which I now see had, had many faults in it, many faults, uh, uh, they were attracted to it and could, could read it. And I really have not yet found anyone who could not read it. Now, this is not to say that anybody can read it as rapidly as they read traditional English. That is, uh, I'm not saying that at all. My, my tests with them, which are not too reliable, would indicate that it requires two or maybe three times as long to read it as one would read ordinary, ordinary traditional English. But that is on, on, on first reading and not, not after it has, after one has uh, become at all accustomed to it. So that I am not completely hopeless about, about making the change earlier than a gradual change. Well, I, as far as the printing trades and the production is concerned, I would go along with your thinking and not worry about it. But what I think you don't realize and may have to <laughs> realize the hard way is that the publishers uh, just aren't having any. They're still publishing British editions of books just because of a few words like honor and labor and uh, uh, center and uh, theater and so on. And uh, the literary people in general are uh, negative to uh, simplified spelling. They are emotionally conditioned against it. The educators, the linguistic scholars, are almost unanimously for it, but you find plenty among the literary people who, if they see even as simple a thing as some of those 300 words that uh, Theodore Roosevelt tried to get the public printer to adopt, things which in all cases had been used by uh, uh, Milton and Shakespeare and so on for, for centuries as, as simple a, uh, a simplification as uh, spelling dropped, D-R-O-P-T, or something of that sort. They gobble and their waffles swell, and they have none of it. The, the very idea that uh, there is any spelling reform in it uh, turns them off. I can, I can readily understand that, yeah. and and that that is just uh, that isn't a reform really. That is just picking out certain yeah. things well, and and changing them. Well, my point is, if there are any, the, the trouble, one of the troubles with the Simplified Spelling Board's proposals, which uh, brought together as uh, high grade a group of scholars and men of affairs as has been assembled to tackle this in a long time, is that uh, they boiled it down finally to about uh, uh, 26 recommendations and published a, uh, a book of five or six uh, thousand words. I think I must have sent you a copy of the SSB handbook yes. on that. The, uh, it got nowhere, among other reasons, uh, because the trouble of following it was more than any possible saving. And as was wisely said, the trouble was not in the uh, that had been taught in Great Britain alone uh, runs uh, to at least a couple of millions and has been studied independently uh, by the uh, appropriate uh, 
national authorities not concerned at all with spelling reform or ITA, but with studying, reading, and writing. And uh, the, at the present time, perhaps 20% of the beginning readers in Britain are using uh, ITA. So we have a very large body of evidence as to the fact that the transition is not uh, the problem. And you may remember in Roadblock I emphasized as the reasons that had held back that method, which has been tried for a century and has always worked, is the, the one at the top of the list is the fear of the difficulty of the transition and its effect on the child's spelling. Mm -hmm. And that has been disproved in terms not of laboratory experiments, of literally millions. Now the moral of that is that the closer you come to one sound, one symbol, the easier you make the writing, which ought to go along concurrently with the reading, and that when the time comes to transfer to TO, you are not going to have significant difficulties either in the reading and writing or in the spelling. Well, now, when you say one sound, one, one, one symbol, uh, uh, wouldn't you call a diagram a symbol, one symbol? A diagram? I would. <laughs> Jim, a diagram? Jim, Jim a Pittman wouldn't. <laughs> no, and, he wouldn't, and but, we, but well, we, we're still uh, talking all, all well, right there yes, when we yes. talk a diagram yeah, yes, or it, a trigram. But yes, if it, if it is for a single uh, for a single sound, always but don't don't overlook the fact that in uh, in West uh, there are uh, four or five uh, two-letter combinations which are not digraphs because they uh, they represent two sounds, and the only reason that they are in the alphabet is because it's the easiest way to call attention to which letter to use in those combinations, the AR. You're talking about, oh, yes. The AR yes. and the OR, and the ER and the UR. Right. And incidentally, the, the WH, which is the two sounds, but transfer, the transpose. Yes. Uh, those are not digraphs. They are, they are convenient uh, uh, clusters, but... Uh, they are di digraphs but they, uh, they, they represent one sound. No, and the, no, AR doesn't represent one sound, nor OR, and for our keepers, ER and UR don't. For our droppers, they do. Oh. For, uh, for the person who, uh, yes. who says far well, and well, near, yes. uh, they, they are, but for the person who says far and near, uh, they are not. They're, they're two, it's purely simply the most convenient way of Put showing in tabular form, this is the way you write uh, unaccented or accented schwa. And by the way, that uh, that may jolt you a little when I say accented schwa. Yes, it does. Be That's fine. All be right. <laughs> because uh, uh, I tried to fight that out uh, way back in uh, 1920 before uh, my uh, uh, relative frequency of English speech sounds was published. And I didn't quite dare uh, take issue at that point with the great majority who, in, who insisted that uh, uh, the two vowels of further or murmur were different. Well, now they aren't. Murmur, the sound is the first one is uh, and the sound of the second one is uh. And the yeah. same is true of further. And at that time, the Webster notation was using seven different regular symbols for schwa and four alternative ones. Now, if that isn't a madhouse, that is. you never saw one. Yes. They have finally uh, gone overboard almost as uh, stupidly in the opposite direction, and, and they now accept schwa for both the accented and unaccented, but they also go on and use it for the short U of but, which is absolutely wrong. No. The, I, I had my first uh, experience in that when I was uh, acting as reporter for the Simplified Spelling Board. I wasn't a certified reporter, but they didn't need a verbatim report, and Father used that method to smuggle me into the meeting. Uh, but any, anyway, uh, there was some discussion by the people who, even though good scholars tend to be misled by the Webster notation into thinking that they pronounced them differently. 
and E.O. Vale, who did an enormous amount of work for spelling the form. He had a peppery temper, and he didn't get too far. But he took on all comers and stood up there and uh, pronounced uh, the schwa for them and applied it in the various places and, and got away with it. The, because if you, if you stop to think, I notice you recognize, you qualify a little bit that it isn't quite like uh, the short U. Yes. But what you don't realize, because of the multiple notations in some dictionaries, is that schwa is a perfectly definite sound. It is a very common one, and it, de it derives from a uh, breaking down of the uh, stressed uh, pronunciation or from the effect of R. But it's a definite sound, and if you listen for a moment, suppose, uh, suppose you say uh, burn, that has the burn. schwa in it actually. Yeah, now, burn. Now, suppose you say but. Now, but. but. Now, try to, try, to say, uh, uh, try to say burn with the vowel of but, and what do you get? You get burn. Sounds, it sounds Scottish. Burn. Burn. Yeah. Burn. 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 It, burn. It isn't. Uh, it, That's it, right. It definitely. Yeah. It is a definite sound mm -hmm. that people are confused on because of the multiple notations. And uh, uh, they have thrown in the sponge some time ago on what I didn't quite dare put in print 50 years ago, that the two vowels of further, which is the best example because it has both spellings, but it's equally true with murmur, are identical. Mm -hmm. And they are a definite sound, just as at and at is a definite sound. And uh, the, in the question of uh, what uh, Sir James has quite aptly named Shui, the oh, high, I think that's a great the, the, I, I think that I think that was a very clever stroke. That is also a definite sound. It isn't a sliding scale toward which things move. And I sent you particularly, and I think I marked why I sent it, that reprint of the introduction to the Unabridged New Standard Dictionary uh, that discussed the uh, uh, revised scientific alphabet. The, uh, uh, yes. <coughs> now, it isn't all clear in my mind, though. Yeah, but uh, the, the, point, uh, the point that I am making is that uh, I think Calvin Thomas wrote that, and he pointed out but uh, you will see instantly, if you stop to think, uh, that long and short are spoken of vowels in two quite different senses. In one sense, it's a question of duration, as in classical prosody. But in the sense that most people understand it isn't, it's a question of closeness. Mm -hmm. the, and uh, the, uh, as uh, Calvin Thomas pointed out, uh, the language for practical purposes uh, distinguishes a close long and an open short. And uh, we speak of them as long and short when really, uh, phonetically speaking, uh, you're talking about uh, closeness and openness. And the shui is also, as uh, I think he points out fairly clearly, a quite uh, definite sound. It, what it is, is close short. That is, it has the quality of E, but the shortness of I. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get believe and receive and debate and all those prefixes. And you also get, and you can pick a fight with uh, a non phonetist most any time, you also get shui at the end of words where Y commonly occurs. Not, not of course, the for the diphthong, I like buy, but I know in the wilds no, no. and history and as, so on. As, uh, yes. that, that is the same sound. It has the closeness of E, but the sharpness of I. And, Only, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, uh, uh, in, in, my, in my name, people try to spell it phonetically, do E. Well, it isn't. It's do I. Do it. Do it. Do it. But the E quality is there, yes, but it's a short sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is important in a uh, notation not uh, to, it's misleading, to use the symbol for a long vowel in a position where duration-wise it's short. For instance, uh, I noticed in 
something of yours, Tyrone, but I or you spelled easy uh, with the double E for the end. I was I was doing that yeah. in that particular yeah. case to make it easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, it, I know it, I know what's it, wrong it, with that, but it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, that was a mistake that uh, uh, Sir James uh, made, and uh, uh, we understand each other, know what we agree on and what we disagree on. I have been associated with him both in uh, shorthand and spelling reform ever since 1936, mm -hmm. uh, long before he was Sir James, and uh, I told him I thought it was in the 50s, but he tells me it was in 1946 when I had come to the conclusion that I told him of my conclusion that nothing he could do would significantly influence the present adult generation. And that suggestion that I made to him was the germ from which he sprouted, ITA. Now, just before he released it, the, uh, I was over in London, and we had uh, a terrific battle, good nature, day in his office over the very question now that uh, you raised when you said, is a digraph a symbol? And I, I said, that is one, one, so one sound, one symbol, if the symbol is a digraph. Well, it, it is one symbol, it isn't one sign, I grant you. But uh, Jim was very insistent uh, that it must have its own separate independent character, even though that looked very much uh, uh, like uh, a, uh, a, a digraph. And at that time, I thought I was right in the long pull I think that at that particular time, he was right for this reason. If he hadn't had the gimmick, and there's no other good word for it, of the new characters, he never would have gotten it off the ground. If it had merely been a reshuffling of the familiar, of the familiar letters, he would never have got the, uh, uh, the authorization from the Ministry of Education and so on, and the, from the University of London and so on. Uh, that got it started. My, it just doesn't seem possible because that's the thing that that uh, that um, had exactly the opposite effect on me. Yeah. I thought it was the worst possible way to do it. Well, not. And I was was horrified that yeah. he tried it. Well, uh, well, I, I, didn't, he, I didn't try it. <laughs> he put those letters together so badly so uh, poorly and uh, they uh, looked so awful. Uh, I, I don't know that I would quite say that. that they're not what I would have chosen. But when you argue that O I with a tie across the top, which is the way it's written in ITA, is a single symbol, but that O I with a ligature under it to show it's a diagraph isn't a single symbol, yeah. why you're quibbling. Well, and uh, the, uh, I think now, that that has been demonstrated. I think that exper experiments will prove, and this is at the top of the list that the Phonemic Spelling Council is waiting to deal with. I think you can prove now that substantially similar results can be gotten with WES, comparable results to what is gotten with ITA. Oh, I'm and, sure you can. And if you do, those who have, uh, the, the educators who have looked at it are fully satisfied of that but you can't prove it to the person who doesn't uh, uh, know anything in the field, even an educator, unless you've got valid experimental evidence. It's got to be, it's got to be run experimentally to be able to, to prove it because uh, the, it's, a, it's not a job like uh, uh, launching a multi-million dollar basal, basal reading series, but it is a big job to experiment even on a small scale for this reason. To be fair, between West and ITA, you've got to have a comparable amount of reading matter in each of them uh, available at the appropriate grade level. Well, the rate at which the ITA learners run through reading matter is incredible to anybody who has uh, been familiar only with TO teaching. The, a child may well run through a hundred books in the course, the ordinary size reader that you'd find in a mm -hmm. kindergarten library, it may well run through a hundred books in the course of getting 
thoroughly familiar in the easiest way with the alphabet. Well, the, uh, it's, it's some sizable job for some publisher to spend something uh, on, or some printer has got to be subsidized, yes. to print a comparable amount of books, preferably the same books, in West. And if you don't, you're loading the dice uh, against it. Mm -hmm. Because the, the essence of the transition is that it makes itself, after they're sufficiently uh, familiar uh, with the phonemic notation. Well, that's, that's very good, and I, I can certainly see uh, <coughs> how you... Uh, what happens, let me ask you this. Now, the youngster learns, using Wes, uh, we'll say, uh, learns uh, to read and uh, to write in that, and then he... Uh, he moves over to a traditional orthography, and uh, eventually the hope is that enough of them <coughs> will have uh, grown up and <coughs> see the absurdity of, our, of traditional orthography so that gradually there will be a, a, a change to uh, uh, using it somewhere. I believe you would talk about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, it will sort of be osmosis or something or other that will bring, ab bring about the change. Uh, well, no, the, uh, the, the point that uh, I summarized in a few lines here uh, in the... Uh, uh, you did it rather, rather cleverly, as I remember your wording. It was pretty good. <laughs> well, <laughs> you said when I, they become I, so, so tired of uh, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Well, the things that I summarized, as as you noticed, I had a an appendix in there of the assumed obstacles to uh, uh, spelling reform, which yes. uh, which tears them apart. But the real obstacles, which I summarized the unawareness by most of those who have learned to spell, passably at least, of uh, how heavily the burden of T.O. bears on the today's school child who is learning. Then an almost total lack of awareness, even by fully literate adults, of the number and nature of the sounds of their own language. If, if you uh, would, yes. if you would, would stop a column of people on the street and ask them how many different sounds they used in uh, in speaking. Uh, you will get guesses that start at 26 and uh, uh, maybe go a few harder, but you've got practically nobody who realizes that if they're speaking literate, literate English, they're using uh, about 40 sounds. They use one less in, in the United States in the, the vowels of uh, uh, bother and father are, are just the same in American pronunciation, but not in British, which is why they need to be distinguished. Uh, what is the difference in the British there? The, the, the British uh, come farther toward the, uh, toward the all sound. Rock, rock, bother, uh, bother would be the uh, American, and bother. It, it isn't bother, but it's halfway from bother to bother. I see. It's, it's, I see. It's a greater, mm. and uh, it is oh. a definite difference, which to them oh. is important, and therefore for international use, uh, it, they should be distinguished. And also, it actually helps in the use of West because, with one or two exceptions, like after W, the it pretty generally corresponds to the T O spelling with A and O. Mm -hmm. So the. As I say, the next is the total lack of awareness by well-educated people of how many sounds they speak and total lack of experience, except for shorthand writers, of writing English phonemically in any notation. And uh, Greg's shorthand writers are pretty well muddled up in that. Lack of agreement among reformers as to exact details of a notation sufficiently compatible with T.O. to bridge the necessary transition. Unavoid, and this is one of the major questions and one of the major handicaps to have gotten anywhere with the Carnegie Simplified Spelling Board. The unavoidable distraction from the substance of any co written communication to its form during the transition period. 
No one, one can't help having their attention called to the difference in form to that extent distracted from the substance that uh, they're trying to convey. The and uh, overshadowing all the rest, of course, is the inertia which dreads the effort of the change. Yes. But, uh, but the, uh, in my best judgment, looking back over a period uh, where spelling reform was intelligently attempted as much as 400 years ago, I mean practically the, the right sounds were singled out and uh, intelligent suggestions made for their use, and has gotten almost nowhere in that whole time. The only solution that I see, and I think it is a solution uh, that can be relied on, is to raise up a generation, and it'll take two generations because you're not overnight going to have everybody learning phonemically, and uh, uh, you're going to have people who uh, learn the other way still around and influential for quite a while. You've got, to be, you've got to be patient enough after waiting 400 years uh, to wait uh, another, two generations. Another, another, another couple of generations. Yes. But once you have a group who on the one hand are conscious of the sounds that they speak and on the other are familiar with the notation for writing them down, uh, you're going to have a demand or even an insistence. If you have an acceptance, which is all you need, yes. you may, may have a demand or even an insistence for a, a valid spelling reform. Now, I, I certainly uh, uh, see your, your uh, point and regard it very highly, of course, but I would, I would, uh, I would ask, uh, while doing this, wouldn't it be uh, in order to make certain compromises <clears throat> in order to, uh, compromises that are, are relatively harmless, in order to um, make the uh, transition when it comes, when, when those who learn the new way, yeah. Well, when, when they who learn the new way uh, finally demand that, that, that things be, uh, be written this way, wouldn't it be, be better that what they're, they, they're the asking for at that time, two generations from now, be the kind of uh, writing that, that can be read by the people who are all already the old readers? Well, the, uh, the question of, uh, of having a kind that can be read at sight uh, in half an hour study uh, by the old readers, the, the necessity for that degree of compatibility is absolutely vital. That is uh, where uh, Bernard Shaw missed the opportunity of a, uh, absolutely. Uh, of a lifetime yes. by in insisting that the Roman alphabet be not used for his proposal. Yes. Because he, he really... I have never, the, the Jim Pittman, who, who talked with him, and uh, Daniel Jones uh, talked with him, trying to interest him in new spelling, which is practically West and so on. Yeah. He had the definite conclusion that he was insistent on eliminating the Roman alphabet, and he so advised the trustee, uh, which resulted in excluding any of the forms that might have gotten somewhere because unless Shaw wrote that with his tongue in his cheek, it's perfectly obvious uh, that when you say that, uh, that to uh, use the new notation until the uh, better displaces the worse, nobody is going to use the new notation so long as it is a complete cipher until they have studied it as much as you study a system of shorthand or, right. or a cipher. Yeah. so that it's self-contradictory. But uh, the, the answer as to how far you go in compatibility, the, I think Sir James uh, went uh, definitely uh, too far, and I think he was wise at that point because we didn't have the evidence that we now have as to how easily uh, the transition can take place. Uh, but uh, uh, That way it can take place easily, but I'm not sure that it can take place in the other direction. Well, how do you mean in, in the other direction? In uh, 
those who already know no English, no uh, traditional English, uh, reading uh, reading the Pittman uh, the Pittman version yeah. of of I I I T A augmented Roman. Yes. Well, that augmented was just his preliminary name. He decided to That's change right. that after He changed it to I T A. To I T A. Well, I'm not uh, I'm not sure with I T A. And bear in mind that for whatever reason. Uh, Sir James expressly disavows any purpose of spelling reform, which is quite something uh, for Isaac Pittman's grandson. <laughs> 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 but uh, he and I discussed that from time to time. But as far as Wes is concerned, I think you will find that it is practically self-reading, even in the spelling reform uh, version and in the uh, uh, initial learning medium version, we had made three important contributions which are large in their effect and uh, uh, as simple and, and small ones are just as complicated to learn uh, as... Uh, now, what, um, what is the dictionary written in? You're, you're a dictionary. What do oh, you regard that in as the, In the spelling report and in the... Uh, uh, ITM in the initial learning media. Initial uh, learning yeah. media. Yeah. All right. We don't have a dictionary of Wes in what you would in call... The, in the pure spelling reform. In the pure, yes. Because no. that's where I was in, in, in uh, trouble. Because you have quite a number of things in there that seem as though they oughtn't to be in there for... Well, uh, there are three things, and I think, I, I think it's spelled out very clearly in the in the guidelines as well as in a couple of places in roadblock. I make three concessions uh, to, and you can see how it, uh, how it works out. I make three concessions from the uh, strictly phonemic writing. Your, I can't read it upside down, right. the double, uh, double consonants where T-O uh, uh, yes, double consonants where where a T O has has a doubled consonant, including S P K. Yeah. Second, the use of C as well as, as K. K, where again, where That's right. T O. That's doubled. right. That's good. Uh, and third, the uh, the use of, of Y uh, Y in where T O has uh, Y for uh, unstressed uh, I or E E. At yeah. the end of a word yeah. or or root. I had to say that because I wasn't using a symbol for shui, and what it is is uh, y at the end, which is shui. But those three, you will notice the scale of the difference that they make. Yes. Now the the scale of the differences of the suggestions, as far as I could follow them, I looked up a few of them. Let me the, mark this in my my book while I'm here. <laughs> this is the roadblock, isn't it? Roadblock, yeah, yeah roadblock. Um, yeah. That, that follows the... Uh, Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm. I've. I've got. All right. Let me tell you what I have here on this. This. This page because yeah. I've made my notes on this page. I say no to the CK. I see no reason to continue CK. Well, the uh, 